I've never had anything like it. And they did vandalize the church. It took us about 600 years to revive it. Good morning from the beautiful town of Monavasia. We woke up to a very sunny morning with a beautiful breeze from the sea. It's, oh, the way the sun is reflecting on the, the sea right now, looking at directly from like the window of the hotel room. It's definitely worth a stay in this town overnight, just to wake up to this and experience it by night. And now we're getting ready to go down the street to get our breakfast. By the way, there's no transportation in um, Monavasia. The only form of transportation in Monavasia is your own two feet. And, oh, what the, again? Okay. <sighs> All right, this town really wants us to get some likes from you guys. Don't forget to leave a like and subscribe because we need your help. This right here is like Lugumades, but it's a specialty of the area, and they use sourdough starter instead of yeast. And there's honey and a little bit of cinnamon. It's nice. I think it's hard when it's a buffet style because you're not going to have it fresh, so it's mm. cold, but I think it would be really good if it was fresh. The flavor is nice. It's good texture. My plate is a little fuller than Olivia's. I got my favorite, Bugatza. It's very good but cold, it's not like when you get it. It's, it's a buffet style thing. This would have been really good if everything was fresh, but still great flavor. Olivia just had something like Lucumades, a specialty of the area, like she said. Um, this is the exact same thing, but this one has banana filling in there. And I'm really curious see how moist it is from the banana it's really good but I can't taste the banana it just seems like dough to me but maybe it's like pieces not like spread all over this so I'm gonna go seek the banana now we'll talk to you later what would you like to do I would like to feed the lovely cats the rest of my turkey <laughs> All right, so we are about to go into a delicious store uh, right by the beginning of the town and it has anything that you can think of, of like traditional goodies in there from marmalades and tapenade to liqueurs local to the area and there is one item in this store that is to die for and it has a really important part throughout history it's called the wine of malvasia uh, malvasia malvasia I guess it depends what country you're from and how you pronounce it this wine is very local made from sun-dried grapes and the process takes about seven years until it's like bottled and um, it only recently came to life but more of that because they will tell us that at the store and the research took so long actually BBC in collaboration with a Greek um, newspaper they did a lot of research to be able to revive this wine because it had been lost for centuries the first evidence we have of this wine being around in the area is from 1214 and uh, another really cool thing is Shakespeare had mentioned it. So this wine was super, super famous back in the day in the East and the West. And people would just travel to get this wine. Actually, royalties 
would be the ones that would drink this wine mostly. And there's actually f old folk songs in th this area that they say how healthy you will be if you had a few sips of this wine. But unfortunately, things took a turn when during the Turkish invasion of Manavasya, a lot of things were destroyed along with the wineries that used to make it and the vineyards. So basically the, the, the type of grape and the vineyards were destroyed. And um, it took about 400 to 600 years to get that going again in collaboration with BBC and Kathy um, Merini, the local newspaper. Yes, mm -hmm. yes. <laughs> rose water and powdered sugar. It's the traditional recipe here. <laughs> this is our speciality. <laughs> so, can I offer you two um, very a nice. glass of our special, the, the local sweet wine of our area, the famous Palmadia, which is our pride. It took us about 600 years to revive it. We finally succeeded in 2010 for the first time after a 15th century. And this is the pride of Monambasia. People from all around the world are coming to taste that famous wine. It's the Shakespeare's wine, sweet from sun-dried grapes. It's there are mature grapes collecting the harvest at the end of September for local uh, white varieties stays in the barrel for two years and then aging in the cellar of the producer for seven years. So total is nine years old. It's the harvest of 2012. Please, enjoy. Thank you. <laughs> I love the bottle. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. And I love the color too. It's <laughs> really nice. You can see why people come here to try this. <laughs> so you had BBC come in here? Yes, and they uh, they had been to Monemvasia municipality and to the producer, uh, of course, uh, vineyards, and they make um, a whole film, a whole documentary with uh, the famous Malvasia. 50 gold prizes all around the world. So it's the best uh, wine in Greece, consider of the metals that had the game in different kinds of competitions all around the world. Uh, this is the way of producing. You see, we sun dried in the middle of the vineyards for 10 to 12 days to lose in water, to gain natural sugar, and then we start the winding wow. procedure. <laughs> so I've never had sweet olives before, but these are actually the black olives from Kalamata, which are the sweet version and Let's see how it is. It should be interesting. I've never had anything like it, but I really like it. <laughs> I bet it would be really nice with cheese. Mm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I really like that. <laughs> we are finally going to make our way to the top of the town to the castle. Let's go. <laughs> So if you haven't already noticed from watching our channel at this point, I have a bit of a thing for history. And wherever I go, if it's a historical place, I can kind of picture things. Not in a weird way. But I can just see like the kids running around here, people doing their laundry outside, people walking with their animals. And that's the kind of place I really love to be at. So please come to Monbasia yeah, if you love history. Oh hey. Howdy. Would you like to come into my house? It doesn't have a roof. It's okay, it doesn't rain much and there's a beautiful view from the other window over here. So come check it out. Only if you like our video and subscribe. Always come on in. We've made it to the gates of heaven. Wow, come, come a little closer and take a look how old this door is. They kept the same stuff on here. Like, it's 
super cool. It makes you feel even more like you're back in time. And then you have to walk through this in order to make it to the very top. So let's go ahead. So here, during the first period of the Ottoman rule, which was between 1540 and around 1690, this space, which they call space two, was, it's kind of right near the gate of the entry. And it served as a small Muslim shrine and it was dedicated to Dervish Mehmet. And I am something people correct me if I'm wrong for what I'm learning, that there is typically some sort of arch which is facing towards Mecca, and then that is the direction in which they would pray. from Hagia Sophia and we were not allowed to video in there uh, we took some pictures and something really interesting this church has been around since the 12th century it's been conquered three different times two times from the Venetians and one time from the Turks during the 400 years that it was under Turkish invasion all of Greece and um, when the Turkish people came in and um, took over the city what they did to a lot of these churches, uh, you'll notice in the pictures we're showing you how the eyes or faces are missing. Actually, this whole church was covered in iconographies from like 900 years ago, and they did vandalize the church. But we, what we noticed was Jesus Christ didn't have any vandalism happen to, to him. And that's because in the Muslim religion, they told us inside, um, Jesus Christ is considered the prophet, but second to Muhammad. So they actually respect him and are a bit scared of him. So that's why they left his iconographies intact. And right here, uh, Bava uh, Saint Sophia, we have the old Hammam, which is such a cool place to come and have a spa day with this kind of view. All right, now let's go to the Acropolis. almost to the top of the Acropolis. By the way, if you're getting confused and you're thinking another Acropolis, Greece has many Acropolises. A lot of different towns, or not even towns, because this is not a habitated place. It's, it's just ruins all around us until we get down to the lower town. Um, so a lot of places, even like really random places, you can be driving through the highway, you look up in a mountain and you see an Acropolis, but like the ruins. The best preserved Acropolis is by far the Athens one and the biggest one, the most grand. But um, here it seems, and it's definitely like a different Acropolis, right? It's not from ancient times, it's from the Byzantine times. And so not quite as old. <laughs> we went all the way to the top like literally all the way to the top but i'm hoping there's a good club sandwich club sandwich at the end of this this is the bridge that connects the island of Hunavasia with the town across and the town's called yafira which actually means bridge do not do the hike to the top in the summertime if you cannot take heat this would be absolute torture. Make sure you bring water. There won't be water. It's, it, it can get pretty hot. So that will conclude our time here in Monobasia. 
We had an amazing time exploring the little streets, eating the delicious food, playing with the cats, and I really hope that we'll come back, especially in the summer, and we hope you enjoyed it as much as we did. Thank you.